Welcome back to Ocarina of Time 3D. Today we'll be starting in the second half of the game, and as you can see, Hyrule has seen better days, but to be fair, if you sleep for seven years, I think it's fair to expect the villain to come along and spit his milk everywhere, and, you know, spawn zombies in your favourite locale. Well, Tom, there's no point in crying over spilled milk. Or zombies, which thankfully aren't the townspeople from seven years prior, they're actually made out of magic. Yeah, you can thank the Smash Brothers Melee trophy for revealing that little tidbit. Ah, uh, just one of the many reasons that Melee is the superior Smash Bros. game. Don't leave us hate comments, I love you all! Fun fact about the Redeads, if you see a group of them, try killing just one of them. You know, use the Sun Song to freeze them all first and foremost. Uh, but then watch what happens. The, the other Redeads will gather around the Fallen One, and it's not really clear what it's meant to represent. They're either mourning the Fallen... Or they're planning to eat it, which honestly, given the Redead's, you know, personality and demeanor, wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. It's best to test out this easter egg in Castletown, or in a later temple, as it needs to be a huge crowd of Redeads to work properly. Now, this right here was a really powerful moment for me, because you don't know what's happened to Hyrule beyond, you know, the Castletown being ruined, and in the distance you can see there's a ring of fire around Death Mountain, so obviously something bad has gone down there, but... Once you step out onto Hyrule Field, there's this overcast shade of uh, evil or darkness, I guess. But when you pass that, everything seems normal, so it kind of gives you a sense of something's not quite right here. Yeah, it's that uncanny valley, and it's no coincidence that the Castletown is the most drastic changed area in the game. I mean, remember, Castletown is the last thing you see as a child, so you get that quick time split there. Oh, thank god the cows are okay. Oh, my best friend, Mr. Cow! How did you survive the apocalypse? Wait, Malin doesn't recognize us? Damn, girl, I've only been gone for seven years. I was trapped in a magical dimension. Cut me some slack. But it looks like you've gone and moved on and forgot about me. <sighs> it's always the same way. She plays a song. We play a song. The horse appears in a cutscene and nearly runs us over. Romance is just dead these days. I'm so alone. Now... There's been a drastic change of pace in Lon Lon Ranch. Talon doesn't run things anymore. Oh no, now it belongs to the great Ingo. Basically what happened is, Gandalf came along, and he says, I want you to raise me a horse, and you can probably guess what the horse is, so uh, now Ingo runs things, and honestly, it's as if Luigi got into the farm business. It's kind of off-putting, really. Has the year of Luigi gone too far? Seriously, Miyamoto, we just wanted a new Luigi's Mansion game, not for Luigi to run this shit. Hey, if we can push up the release date of Mario and Luigi 4, you know what, I'm fine with Ingo running things. Please, Ingo, I'll ride any of these horses for that. But the horse you actually want is Epona, since that's the one you have a song for. If you try to approach her without playing the song, she'll run away from you, because just like Malin, she's also forgotten all about us. Seriously, do I mean nothing to no one? You also have to ride her around to initiate a race with Ingo, but I'm not exactly sure how much you have to ride around. Because there's been times where I just back right up into him, and he's like, you're pretty good. It's like, thanks. I didn't do anything, but thanks. You're also on my foot. Get off. Get off. But then there are other times where I'll jump over all the fences several times, have five seconds on the clock, and Ingo will just say, you're getting pretty good at that. It's like, did you not see all the fences I jumped over? I'm more than good. I'm like the best. To actually escape the ranch with a pony, you need to race Ingo twice, actually. First time is just for funsies, uh, but if you lose, you will also lose 50 rupees. Be sure to challenge him while you're riding a pony, as all the other horses are way too slow to actually stand a chance against Ingo. Plus, it would kind of not make sense if he won the race, and then he's like, Oh, that's Bob, my most powerful horse, how did you know? Now, uh, the key to winning this race, as with all other races in life, apart from the rat race, of course, is to stay on the inside track. Now, Ingo is a sneaky bastard, uh, as evidenced by the story of Ocarina, and he'll try to push you out of it, so uh, use your carrots sparingly. Use no more than three at a time, and you should be good to go. My rule of thumb is always just to keep two in reserve. That way, if you're at the last leg of the race, and Ingo just happens to whiz past you, you still have those last two for a final burst of speed. 
Yeah, the uh, trick to uh, winning these races effectively, and you know, just utilizing a opponent effectively, I guess, is don't burn up all your carrots straight away because it takes more time to reload than if, say, you only use two or three. In the second race especially, Ingo will try and push you out of the inside track, which is annoying as shit, but just try and persevere and stay ahead as much as you can. Or if you're in time, be super lucky! <laughs> yeah, I... To say that I won this race by the skin of my teeth is an understatement, really. You won it by the length of a horsehair. Look at that shit. That was a photo finish. Man, Waluigi is friggin' pissed. I don't know why, I mean, he can still win the minigame star. He's gonna be a sneaky, cheaty bastard and lock us into Lon Lon Ranch. But, he left out the fact that there are actually four exits to this ranch while riding on a pono. You have the fen you have the three post fences around the ranch, and then you actually can jump the gate right in front of Ingo. Wait, really? I thought that was like an impassable wall or some shit. That's what the game said it ought to be. So did I. I actually spent a few minutes, like, just riding a pono back and forth trying to jump the fence. I was like, no, you guys are lying to me. But then, I jumped over. The window is really small, but yeah. Opponent can't jump over Ingo. So basically, you have to be frame perfect. I guess. Now, you may think, uh, well, the field's not that big, why do I need a horse to cross it? Basically, it helps with the tedium, because at this moment, besides the pose that are dotted here and there, and there are very few of these, roughly about 10 in all, there's nothing here for adult Link to fight. All the style trials have disappeared. Don't worry, you'll be seeing what happened to them in the next part. And yeah, basically, a pono is just the fastest way to get across without falling asleep. The important thing about those 10 poses you mentioned is that y if you kill them all, bottle them up, you can sell them to a poke collector that's in the drawbridge. And if you sell him all 10, you get the fourth bottle in the game. Yeah, that's one of the bottles I never really bother to get whenever I play for Ocarina. It's a bit too much like busy work, to be honest. Yeah, plus three is more than enough. Yeah, especially for an upcoming mini dungeon, only. Now, in this area of the game, I don't know how most people are normally supposed to figure it out, but when I was a kid, I had the strategy guide. And so, I was able to read Go to the Grave to get the hookshot. But... It turns out that if you don't have an all-powerful Nintendo Power Guide, you're supposed to talk to the people in the town and they let you know that the Gravekeeper is dead. Then, you go to the Gravekeeper's shack and you're supposed to read his diary, and in his diary he says, I'm dead, come to my grave. I hope you're not all like me, and have a fear of graveyards, zombies, the undead and so on, because we're going to be racing through Dampe's tomb, and by god, this place is creepy as shit. Not as creepy as one of the temples we'll be visiting later, but it's a close contender for second place at least. Yeah, I like how they included some actual skeleton remains in here, even though this is supposed to be his grave, but I guess when you spend your entire life as a gravekeeper, you can't really have the money to buy an elaborate mausoleum. Now the most annoying part about this race, and I say race like that because it's it's more of like an obstacle course than anything, and any, anyway, the most annoying part is the fireballs which come from off screen, and they will come from off screen all the time. Yeah, you have to manipulate the camera to make sure that you don't turn the corner and walk right into a fireball. <laughs> As you'll be seeing soon enough. Luckily, aside from all this bullshittery, he follows the same route every single time. Whenever you enter a big room, he always goes to the right. So just use that tip. I don't know what it is with Zelda and races through tombs and whatnot, but they kind of reuse this whole thing in Majora's Mask when you race against the Deco Butler. That place was pretty creepy as well. In this last intersection, even though he went to the left, you can actually go straight. The two paths intersect. If you're not fast enough to actually keep up with him, this door will close and you have to redo the race. So even though it's called a race, you don't necessarily beat Dampe. It's just, can you keep up with Dampe while he blocks your way? Mm -hmm. Do you get anything for redoing the race? If you redo the race and do it under a minute, you get a piece of heart. That's usually how most of the mini games in this game work, is that do it once, get a mediocre prize, do it again, but better, get a heart piece. Well, I wouldn't exactly call the hook shot a mediocre prize, Maxi. Ah, true, true. This is actually its third appearance in the entire Zelda series. It first appeared in Link to the Past and was used again in Link's Awakening. 
However, in the 3D games, it's less useful as a weapon, like it was in the 2D games, and more useful for puzzle solving and reaching unaccessible areas. You can latch onto any surface made of wood, and also there are bullseyes all over Hyrule made specifically for the hookshot. I mean, really, if Ganondorf really wanted to stop Link from finishing his quest, all he had to do was remove the hookshot targets, and Link would be entirely screwed. The handling was a little finicky in the original Ocarina. Uh, fortunately, though, in Majora, they tweaked the uh, physics or handling of it a little bit. It's a lot more user-friendly. They also made it more user-friendly in the 3D version by throwing a red ring around the red dot when you're actually targeting on a hookshotable target. Now, you see, that's how you make a game more accessible without casualizing it. But I thought the best way to do it was to have my directions repeated at me five times. You shut the fuck up. I thought we agreed never to talk about that thing. So apparently the windmill is attached to a grave full of corpses, and I guess that block of time was the only thing separating the two, and since we removed that, do you think that the overwhelming stench of the cane body is now starting to seep into the windmill? I'm sorry, I have a phobia of graveyards in general, so I never liked coming to Kakariko Village. I mean, the music is nice, there's like a cool few things, it's obviously, you know, connected to Death Mountain, which has a couple of the best dungeons in the game, but, oh god, I had to get over a few phobias before I was able to finish Ocarina. So going into a tomb didn't cure you of your phobia? Seems legit. Now that we're on the field, I want to talk a bit more about Epona. See, the idea of horseback riding gameplay actually started back during the development of Super Mario 64. Why the fuck Miyamoto wanted to include a horse in a Mario game is beyond me. But thankfully, the horse wasn't included in Mario and was instead shifted to Ocarina of Time. The developers didn't want the controls to be too difficult, so Epona automatically jumps over barriers when she has enough speed. Also, the carrot system was only added to make the experience more entertaining. The developers also wanted to include horseback sword battles, but that feature won't be included in the Zelda franchise until Twilight Princess. Now, I would be surprised by that little tidbit, but Mario already kind of has a horse, Yoshi, so it kind of all worked out in the end, I guess. Man, even the forest isn't safe from Ganon's douchebaggery. It's just like the scouring of the Shire all over again. I love the placement of that big Deku Baba because when you enter the area, it actually can't hit you. It's only once you've taken a step or two that you're actually in its attack range, so it plays completely on the fact that you're hopefully going to remember the village as it was when you were a child. Ah yeah, it's giving you time to react and just try to be fair about it in the process. I see it more as that it's playing on your expectations and then punishing you for having them. So you can talk to all the Kokiri villagers, but at the end of the day, they're all just going to say, Peter, what happened to you? You got so old. Ah, uh, Hulk. Brilliant movie. It's so good. It's the best reincarnation of Peter Pan, and it had Robin Williams in it. Mm -hmm. And Robin Williams actually has a funny connection to 3D, or just Zelda in general, really. Yeah, he actually named his daughter Zelda after playing the original Legend of Zelda. And it became such a cool idea that Nintendo called on Robin Williams and his daughter Zelda to make commercials and interviews to promote Ocarina of Time 3D. And Robin Williams had the most bitching beard imaginable in those. I mean, it's shaved off now, sadly, but Jesus Christ, it was a thing to behold. It wasn't all scraggy like the Jumanji, no, this was Gandalf quality beardage. <laughs> you know, Daphnis Nos Hyrule, you know, the king from uh, Wind Waker, pretty much like that, but on a grander scale. And the commercials were actually really cute, because it was just the two of them playing Zelda and talking about how much they loved it. I found it hilarious that both of them, their favorite thing to do in Ocarina of Time was just run around and cut grass. Man, Nintendo sure have come a long way from making commercials for Zelda games that feature lines like, Will Doust get the girl, or will Doust play like one? Yeah, I actually remember that commercial. Nintendo got a lot of flack for that, so they pulled it down and replaced the girl line with, Wilt thou soar, or wilt thou suck? <laughs> you know, I think they took that revised line to heart, because in Skyward Sword, not only do you soar, but the game also sucks. Her snap! Thank you, thank you, I'm here all week, try the cuckoo. You know, there's a certain tragic element here, with Mido not recognizing Link in his grown-up form. 
But on the other hand, Mido was a dick to Link when Link was in his child form, so I can't feel too bad for Mido right now. Also gonna be taking our sweet time getting through Lost Woods. I don't want to hear none of your speed running bullshit, Maxi. Come on, we already went through this. How do you not have it memorized? It's been seven years, man. Cut me some slack. Well, you made it through, so congratulations. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so over the last seven years, the Force Men has changed in that the Mad Scrubs are no longer around and instead have been replaced with a familiar Zelda enemy, the Moblins. And with the enemy change, the gameplay has changed as well. Whereas before, it was more like an obstacle course, really. You know, you go through the tunnels, I guess. You reflect the uh, Deku Nuts back at the Mad Scrubs. You know, give them a quick slash, they die. If you try that here, you'll get your ass handed to you by the Moblins. This is now a stealth section, first and foremost. you got to creep up on them, use the hook shot, but be careful not to get too close, otherwise they'll turn around and they'll charge you, and believe me, the noise they make when they charge you is enough to put you off the game for at least five years. At least, that's what happened to me. Their appearance is also a lot more intimidating, whereas in the original, they kind of look like deformed bulldogs. The graphical update definitely shows that they're a bulldog-pig hybrid. It doesn't help that the enemies just punish you. I mean, with other enemies, if you miss, like, a slingshot, attack so what you can throw your boomerang you have a lot of backup plans you miss the hook shot and the moblin sees you you're done yeah pretty much and it's kind of funny it's a bit like the castlevania whip there's a little bit of delay on when the hook shot will fire and you also can't lock on them which ironically means that there's no navi text for any of the moblins but is that really such a hindrance i mean what's navi gonna say look out link it's gonna charge you and hurt you with its big giant pointy stick it's so weird that this is the only area in the game where there are Moblins. Considering that in all previous Zelda games, the Moblins actually consisted the primary force of Ganon's army. That's an interesting fact. B was I seeing things back there? Oh what, you mean the Sheikah Stone freaking out? Yeah. Nah, you didn't see that. It also stinks that the hookshot has a limited range. So you have to wait. Patience, not the best of friends with Enton. Pretty much. Now the graphical update has really done wonders for the Moblins. They look great in this. It's a pretty good looking game altogether. I mean, look at those vines. Those are nice vines. <laughs> Although, if I had to give one criticism of uh, 3D's graphical update, it makes some characters look a bit odd. Like Saria, for example, uh, the way they've just kind of pasted a new texture onto her existing character model makes it look like it's someone else wearing a Saria suit. It's kind of weird, really. Like, her head is too big for her body or something. Or Hyrule has been invaded by the Body Snatchers. <laughs> Pretty much. Now, I think, I'm not entirely sure because I never tested this myself, but I think you can use the gyro controls to peek around corners more effectively. So if you're having trouble with the moblins, like they're ambushing you and whatnot, try that method. This is cool because it's kind of like an evolution of the uh, Hyrule Castle stealth section, but with a bit more action. Now you can actually attack the guards. I love how they gave this giant club moblin a cutscene just to accentuate that he is big and bad, but still just as pathetically easy to kill as his comrades. Yeah, once you get behind him, just a few spin attacks, boom, he's dead as shit. And he's the only one in the entire game, but in Master Quest they threw in a second one. They put him in the spirit temple of all places. I don't know how he got in there, what he's doing in there, but it's Master Quest. Shit happens. This is actually where Sheik starts fulfilling his primary role in the game of appearing sometime before you enter a temple, talking about stuff like friendship or the heart or darkness or something, and then he teaches you the respective warping song of that particular temple. Now, using a mis musical instrument to warp around Hyrule has been around since the first Legend of Zelda, and Link's Awakening actually introduced the, for the first warping specific song in Mambo Mambo. But of course Ocarina of Time was the first game to require you to play individual notes to use a warp song.
For those of you who don't know, a minuet is a social dance between two people. It's a French origin, just in case you wanted to know. Man, the theme and use of music throughout the Zelda series is so prevalent, it's kind of hard to imagine what it would be like if it wasn't there. And off she goes, because, as you know, he is a ninja. He does this sort of thing. Well, that and show up unexpectedly and spout philosophical lines and teach melodies and whatnot. I guess the Sheik are multi-talented. Please join us next time where we enter the first Adult Link dungeon and check out the enigmatic, the eerie, forest temple. See you all then.